In this video, we're going to discuss how to find a missing constant so that the linear system has either infinitely many solutions, no solutions, or one solution. First of all, a quick recap. We call a system uh, an independent consistent system if it looks like this, where you have two lines and they intersect once. So we have one point of intersection. POI stands for point of intersection. This will happen if the slopes of the two lines are not equivalent and the y-intercept that we usually call b, they could be same or different. That part doesn't matter. We also have an inconsistent uh, so, uh, solution or system. And so in this situation is when you have two parallel lines where there is no way that they would ever intersect. This happens if the slopes of the two lines are equal but the y-intercepts are not. Lastly, we can have a dependent system where we have infinitely many solutions, which means there's one line and another one right over top of it. And so there's infinitely many point of, points of intersection. This will happen when you have both the y-intercepts and the slopes to be the same of both lines. In other words, they're identical lines. So let's go through an example where you're not told the coefficient on the x fully. Uh, so we're going to find this a so that this system of equations has no solutions. What you want to do is isolate y in both equations so we could see the slope and the y-intercept. In the equation number one, first thing we can do is add 3y to both sides to make y a positive. We can subtract uh, 7 from both sides so that uh, the 3y will be by itself. Next, we can divide everything by 3. And so here we have y isolated, and we can pick out the coefficient of the x term will be our slope. And uh, the term that doesn't have an x on it will be the y-intercept. Equation number 2, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to isolate the y. So we're going to take this term, which is negative, and add it to both sides so that it uh, disappears from this side where y exists. So now y is by itself. So the coefficient on the x is going to be our slope. So here coefficient is just 10a, so the slope would be just 10a. Do not grab the x along with it. It's just 10a is the slope, and the y-intercept is 3. Next, because we want a, a, a system with no solutions, here's the result from last slide. We want the slopes to be the same, but the y-intercepts to be different. Well, the y-intercepts are indeed different. This one has 3, and this is a fraction negative 7 over 3. So that is satisfied. So always do the check. Don't make any assumptions. And then we're going to work with this. So slope number 1 is 7 over 3, and slope number 2 has 10a. In this equation, we want to isolate for this a. We can divide both sides by 10 and arrive at our result. So therefore, if a is 7 over 30, this system will have no solutions. Let's try another type. We're going to find a so that the system of equations has infinitely many solutions. So the first equation is actually what we've seen before. So we're going to isolate y to see m and b. So the steps were the same for equation number one. So I'm just going to copy them back in here. Equation number two is slightly different. So let's walk through the steps here. We're going to add 14x to both sides to get y isolated, and then we need to get rid of the a. To get rid of a coefficient on the y, we need to divide everything by a. Then the coefficient on, on the x is going to be our rate of change or slope, and the term without an x will be our y-intercept. So here are the two results. Next, because we're looking to find infinitely many solutions, this is the result that we had from the first slide. We have, for infinitely many solutions, we need to have exactly the same equation. So slopes have to be the same and y-intercepts. So slope from first equation is 7 over 3. If we make it equal to slope of the second equation, 14 over a. Uh, and then for the y-intercepts, we need this negative 7 over 3 to be equal to negative 14 over a. Uh, these equations actually are going to be the, uh, yielding the same solution for a, just the second equation over here just has a multiple of negative on both sides. So I'm just going to work with this first one. 
Uh, to work with uh, equations with fractions, I prefer to remove the fractions. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 and a. So 3a. What happens then, we can, on this side, 3 divides by 3, and we just need to multiply 7 with a. On this side, a and a divides out, and we just have to multiply 14 with 3. So this is the result. Then to get a alone, we need to divide both sides by 7, and we get a is equal to 6. And so we can do a, a therefore statement. If a equals 6, then the system will have infinitely, infinitely many solutions. Let's try another. Find the value of k so that the system of equations has infinitely many solutions. So equation number one, we have several terms with x and several terms with y. So we're going to choose which side we're going to keep the y on and just rearrange some things. So I'm going to do a dotted line over here where the equals is so that I make sure that I do the same thing on either side of this dotted line. So I want to get rid of 2x. I'm going to be getting all the y's on this side. So to get rid of positive 2x, I need to subtract 2x from both sides. So I do it once in front of the dotted line and once afterward. And I put it underneath this original x here so I can see the like terms. Then on this side, I have 4y. I want this 4y to be collected together with the 5y on the other side of the equals. So to get rid of a positive 4y on this side, I need to subtract 4y here. But if I did it on this side of equals, I need to do it also on the previous side. So I put it underneath 5y because then we have like terms aligned here as well. So then uh, 2x minus 2x is gone. 5y minus 4y is just 1y. You don't have to record the 1, so just y. 8 stays. We didn't do anything with it. 4y subtract 4y is gone. And negative x subtract 2x is negative 3x. And in this situation, we have y isolated already. So we can see the slope is going to be negative 3, so the coefficient on the x. And the term without an x is the y-intercept 8. Let's do the same thing with equation number 2. I'm going to keep my equals really visible for myself with this dotted line, so I make sure that I do the same thing on both sides of the equal side. So I'm going to uh, subtract 5x on both sides to get rid of 5x from this side and collect it together with that x here. I'm going to get rid of the plus y on this side by doing subtract y on both sides, and I've put it underneath this y so that I have like terms. And then I have an 8 and 22. These are like terms, so I'm going to choose to get rid of 8 on this side, so subtract 8 here but I also need to do it on the other side as well. So 5x minus 5x is gone. Uh, ky subtract y, I'll deal with that later. 8 minus 8 is gone. 22 minus 8 is 14. Sub, uh, negative 1 subtract um, 5x is negative 6x, and these uh, also cancel out. Next, because we want to isolate for y, we want y to appear only once, but there's two y's over here, this term with y and this term with y. This is where factoring comes in. You want to think to yourself, what is common between those two terms, and divide it out. So we're going to divide by y, but we can't change the question. If we, did, if we divide it, we also need to multiply. So what does that yield? y divided by y here, the first term will have just k, so y stays in front. Uh, the first term inside the bracket will be just k, and subtract, we'll have y divided by y, which is 1. So we got this to look like y appears only once, which is then possible to isolate for it. So what we're going to do right now is divide by, by this multiplication beside the y. To undo multiplication is division. So what you do to one side, you do to the other. So here these divides out, and we just have y. And then 14 divided by this k minus 1, and then this negative 6 divided by k minus 1 is the coefficient on the x. Now that we have y isolated, we can pick out our slope and y-intercept. So remember, slope is the coefficient on the x. Everything that's attached to the x, but not the x itself. Next, we're looking for infinitely many solutions. So this is the picture and the results we want. Slopes to be the same and y-intercept to be the same. Let's start with slopes. Slope number 1 is negative 3. Slope number 2 is negative 6 divided by k minus 1. Next, we want to get rid of that denominator, so we're going to multiply both sides by k minus 1 binomial. 
on one side uh, it disappears and we have negative 6. On the other side, just put them side by side, negative 3 with k minus 1. Then you can distribute negative 3 into the bracket and multiply. And you'll have negative 3k plus 3 equals negative 6. Then we can uh, uh, subtract uh, 3 from both sides to get uh, negative 3k by itself. Then we need to divide both sides by negative 3 to get k by itself. And so k becomes negative, or sorry, just 3. Uh, we need to check whether that works with um, y-intercepts as well. So either solve this equation for k, just like we did before, and compare the two k values you get, if they're consistent or not. Or because you found k equals 3 here, we can substitute it and just check if left side equals right side. So does 8 actually equal to this fraction 14 divided by k minus 1? So k minus 1 will be 3 minus 1, which is uh, 14 over 2, which gives you a 7, not an 8. So this means there's a contradiction. So k being 3 is actually not going to work here. Um, so what we can say, it is not possible to find k for infinitely many solutions. So that's, that could be one of your solutions, that it is impossible to find a constant to make it so. And last question. We're going to find a constant c so that the system has one solution. So taking equation number one and reorganizing it by subtracting 2x from both sides, dividing by 3, and looking at our slope and y-intercept. So slope is going to be coefficient of x, and y-intercept would be the term without an x. Then equation number two, we perform the same thing. We subtract 4x from both sides, divide everything by c, and then the slope would be negative 4 over c, and the y-intercept 8 over c. Because we want to have one solution, we need to have slopes to be different, and it really doesn't matter what happens with the y-intercepts. So they have to be not equal to each other, so we're going to be working with inequality here. So we'll say slope number 1, negative 2 over 3, does not equal to negative 4 over uh, c. And we'll solve this as if it was an equation. We'll just keep writing equals with a crossed off version of it so that it's always a not equal to symbol. So we're going to multiply by 3c both sides to get rid of fractions. That uh, um, 3 here and this 3 divide out. And the c on this side and c on this side divide out. So here we have negative 2 with c only. And on this side we have negative 4 with 3 only. So negative 2c cannot equal to negative 12 for this to be true. Then we divide both sides by negative 2, and that gives us that c cannot be positive 6. So we can say as a conclusion, as long as c is not positive 6, the system will have one solution. In other words, you can also state it this way. You could say that c is an element of real numbers. So the symbol you'll learn later is an element of Capital R represents real numbers, so that's decimals, uh, not decimals, um, uh, fractions, negative, positives, all the types of numbers you know so far, except you're saying that C cannot be 6. So everything is allowed except 6. And that concludes this video.